Hi everyone. In this presentation, I will discuss production related issues in Lynx supply chain management simulation game. One of the question that you will have to think while making decisions is whether to have inventories or to rely on emergency production. This trade-off is something that you will be making several times during simulation game. Now let's look at some of the key things that you will have to keep in mind while making that trade-off. You'll have to pay careful attention to your demand forecasts. Since both inventories as well as emergency production are directly related to how accurate your sales forecasts are. You'd like to calculate the per unit cost to inventory and the per unit cost to emergency production so that you can compare which of the two alternative is beneficial for the company. Discuss the factors besides per unit inventory and emergency production costs. Now a lot of times you will have to think about carrying additional inventories for reasons other than cost or to rely on emergency production for reasons other than cost. For example, if you are introducing a new product, clearly you would not like to keep inventory of the previous product and want to bring that inventory to as low a quantity as possible so that the disposal sale can be accounted for a very small number of units. So in that case, it's something that you are considering beyond just the cost of choosing inventory versus emergency production. So you have to think on those lines as well at times during simulation game. Keep the impact of this decision in perspective. What is the overall effect of the decision on the fixed costs and profitability? On short-term results as well as on long-term results. So you'll have to consider this trade-off and its implication over your top line as well as the bottom line for the firm in short-term and long-term basis. After you make your decision, then you track your results, just as in all the other performance scenarios. You want to see what is the overall trend by using your off. Is the result in line with what you expected? And those are the things that will help you to adapt your decisions as you go forward. Now let's look at a few problems to understand some of the aspects associated with this inventory or emergency production decisions. Let's start with the first problem where we are assuming that a product, the firm produces a product H, which is hyperware, 77432. It's been produced at your plant for shipment to all regions. Okay. So we are required to calculate the total cost associated with this particular product. These question marks are the places that we have to fill in. Now, since the product configuration is 77432, it tells us that we are using 7 kilograms of alpha, 7 kilograms of beta. The bandwidth is 4 terahertz and warranty is at level 3. Packaging is at level 2. The gamma and epsilon that is needed is 1 and 1. This is given to us. Now, this information can be used to calculate total cost because what you see in red here is what is available in manual. So, for alpha, every kilogram costs you $3. For beta, every kilogram costs you $4. Bandwidth is computed by using this equation where the terahertz which is given to you here will be substituted in this equation to calculate the total cost in dollars. So, let's calculate this for our product. So for three dollars per kilogram and seven kilogram we incur twenty one dollars for alpha and seven times four twenty eight dollars for beta. Bandwidth if we substitute t equals four in this equation and then take the cube of 4, multiply it with 0.5, and then add 10, we will get $42. For warranty, likewise, if we substitute 
the value of 3 in this equation, take the square of that, multiply it with 3, and then add 8, we would get $35. Packaging, since we are using option 2, which is the premium option, so we would put the value or the cost associated with that, which is $14. And when we add all these cost components, our total cost for this product comes out to $233.49. All right. Now, once we have figured out the total cost for this product, let's move forward with an understanding of inventory cost and emergency production cost. We like to look at some of these trade-offs using this product. So calculate the cost of holding one unit of this product in inventory for one simulation round. In each of the following regions, we would assume normal ship shipment using shipper I by air. For DC2, we are assuming that we own our own facility. And DC3, we assume that we are subcontracting the um, DC from a third party. So for DC2, if you were to calculate the total cost here, the inventory holding cost, it would be 3% of the cost of the product because we own this facility. So for DC2, this value is going to be 233.49, which is the product cost times 3%. This gives you approximately an inventory holding cost of $7. For DC3, it's going to be 5% because it's subcontracted to a third party. So taking the product cost of 233.49 and then multiplying it with 5%, you get approximately $11.67. Now calculate the incremental cost, which is costs above and beyond the total unit cost from the previous part of this problem, which we saw for emergency production of one unit of this product. Assume that emergency procurement is not necessary and you need fewer than 5,000 emergency units produced. Now this 5,000 is the limit that is out there for the emergency production. It costs you some money to keep that limit just in case your sales forecasts are off, off than what the actual sales are. So this company has established 5,000 as that limit for emergency production and we are expecting the requirements to be less than that, that maximum limit. Assume you normally ship units via air from your plant to DC2 and DC3 using shipper I. The incremental cost for one unit of emergency produced H77432 shipped from plant to DC2. So if you were to calculate the emergency production cost here, we will have to consider the premium that we will have to pay on production, the premium that we will have to pay on labor, as well as the air shipment premium, because it's going to be um, sent as an emergency transportation. So if you were to look at the production cost, it will be at the premium of 50%. This is the information that is available in the manual. So production cost premium will be at 50%. So from that part A of the problem, we know that the production cost is $20. So 50% premium on that would be 0.5 times 20. So we will have to pay $10 more for just production plus labor cost premium because when we are emergency producing a product we have to pay premium for labor as well which is also at the rate of 50 percent so this will be 0.5 times the labor cost of 30 dollars which is given to you in part a that's equal to 15 dollars
And finally, from exhibit nine in your links manual, the air shipping costs you $8 per unit and you have to pay 50% premium on top of it for such products, for, for this emergency production. So plus air shipping, which is at $8 per unit and the premium is 50% which is going to be 0.5 times 8 and that is $4 okay so all these 50% values that you see here these are the premium that you're paying so the total additional cost that you will be incurring per unit for emergency production is going to be 10 plus 15 plus 4 which is $29 so this is the per unit additional cost right so next let's look at the incremental cost of one unit of one unit of emergency produced H77432 shipped from your plant to DC3 so now we are considering DC3 as against DC2. The only difference between the two would be in terms of the air shipment cost. In DC2, we had the air shipment cost of $8 per unit. For DC3, the air shipment costs are $14 per unit. Again, this information is from Link's manual. So you would have the production, sorry, the production premium at 50% which is $10 labor cost premium 50% which is $15 and air shipping premium $14 per unit is the normal costs and then premium would be 50% of that which is seven seven dollars so total you will incur thirty two dollars more per unit this is the incremental cost for one unit of emergency production meant for DC3 so part D is which option appears to be more profitable or rather lower cost choice keeping one unit of inventory or making one unit through emergency production. Now for for DC2 we had seven dollars for inventory and emergency production the value was 29. Now this is less than 29. For DC3 likewise we had inventory costs as $11.67, whereas the emergency production was $32 more. Again, this turns out to be less. So in this particular problem, we would prefer to keep a unit of inventory as against relying on emergency production. Just write that also here. Keep a unit of inventory. That would be the decision based on our cost. Now list some other factors that would influence your decision to choose either inventory or emergency production. So we have to think about other factors than cost. So we will have to think about things such as upcoming configuration if that is the case we would keep less inventories because we would like to dispose of inventories as quickly as possible so upcoming reconfiguration would be one example of a situation where you would keep less inventory so less inventory is preferred in this case the second would be customer satisfaction now if you want to increase customer satisfaction you want to have higher fill rates and less stockouts so in this situation 
satisfaction sorry you would prefer more inventories okay and then you also have some standby charges for establishing emergency production limits as we saw in that problem the company had the limit of 5000 units so you have to pay two dollars per unit for hyperware and three dollars per unit for metaware to maintain such emergency production limit standby charges so those standby charges will also influence your decision to either go for inventories or for emergency production so i would write that here emergency production limit standby charges So you have two dollars per unit that you pay for hyperware and three dollars per unit for metaware so you keep that in consideration while deciding whether to have additional inventories or to choose emergency production now we move forward from this decision between inventories and emergency production to a question that revolves around postponed production. We want to understand the benefits of it, when should we go for it, and what is the way that Lynx calculates the total cost associated with postponed production. So assume you you currently produce a product H11111, so it's like the lowest possible configuration that's been produced at your manufacturing plant for all regions, and you source subassembly components from supplier D. Using your Lynx participants manual, you determine the unit cost of this product to be so and so. So we simply add all these cost components to get the total unit cost as one hundred thirty nine dollars and fifty cents now we will use this information of manufacturing costs in our calculation in the next slide S specifically we will be required to use the information about the labor cost and production cost that you see here which is the manufacturing plant costs and then if you were to engage in postponed production you will have a postponed production labor cost and production cost at DC 1, 2, and 3. So this information is something that we will be using as we go forward and make some, some of these calculations in the next slide. Right, so assume that you own a DC in every region and you are planning to explore postponed production in each region. Refer to your Lynx participants manual to complete the worksheet to calculate the cost of postponed production for H11111 in each region. We will keep these shaded boxes as blank. Right, so the P0 config configuration, if you look at the manual, it will tell you that we always overbuild a P0. So even though our product configuration is H11111, you notice that we are using nine kilograms of alpha and nine kilograms of beta. It's akin to overbuilding this and then scraping off some of those kilograms that are not needed. So we will convert this P0 into P1 by removing that extra eight kilogram that we have put in this overbuilt version of it. So this will be costing us some money, which is $3 times 9 for alpha, which gives you $27. And $4 times 9 for beta, which is equal to $36. Alright, and then labor and production, as we saw in the previous slide, this is going to be happening in your manufacturing plant. So the labor cost is $22 production cost is eleven dollars the total cost comes out to ninety six ninety six dollars okay so this cost has already been incurred on this product 
Now, this cost will be added to any additional cost that you will incur while producing this postponed product in region 1, region 2, and region 3. So this $96 will be put into this cell to ensure that it's been added to anything else that we do with this production. Now we come to the region 1 calculations for postponed production of this product. So we will now add the cost associated with bandwidth because this is a semi-finished format of the product that we have shipped from the plant to the DC. In region 1, essentially it's a co-located DC, but in region 2 and region 3, they are located in completely different geographies. So we have added alpha and beta and then shipped them out. And at the DC, we would be introducing the bandwidth, warranty, packaging, gamma, epsilon, and other things. So the bandwidth cost is going to be $10.50. And this is going to be the same for all three regions, because that's the cost that we will have to incur for one terahertz of bandwidth. So we would put that value here. For warranty, likewise, we will have to pay $11 because we are choosing option one for our warranty here. So that option one costs you $11 and doesn't matter which region you're going to produce it in. For packaging, likewise, for option one, you have a $10 cost. Again, this will be consistently the case for all three regions. So we add these costs here. Now we have gamma and epsilon. Once again, these costs are going to be the same irrespective of the region because you still require the same amount of gamma and epsilon. That is one and one. So one unit of gamma costs you $22 and one unit of epsilon costs you $29. So we would introduce those costs for all three regions. $22 for gamma and $29 for epsilon. Okay. Now we have to consider the labor and production costs depending on which region it's going to be converted to the finished product. We saw in the previous slide, these labor costs and production costs would vary depending on the region. So from that table, we note down first the labor cost and production cost for region one. So that is $14 and $12. Then for region two, it is $15 and $14. And for region three, it is $12 and $11. So now we have all the cost components required to get the total unit cost for this postponed product in the three regions. And that turns out to be $204.50 for region 1, $207.50 for region 2, and $201.50 for region 3. So we calculate how much would it cost if we were to postpone it and produce it in each of these regions. Now next, for the same example, we want to know which product costs were the same for the product produced in the region, whether it's it was by postponed production or without postponed production. We have these different cost components. So if you look at the calculations that we just did, we noticed that the raw materials will change depending on postponement production and, and, and production without postponement because we are overbuilding the product when we are engaging in postponement production. So this is not the answer for the one which would remain same. The duties and tariffs will also change because if you are using postponement production, then you can reduce the duties and tariffs for a region. Otherwise, it would incur that import duty because the because of the foreign content of the product. Transportation costs we have seen earlier would change depending on where the production is happening. So out of all these, the bandwidth, warranty and packaging values remain the same 
irrespective of where we have actually built the product so we would put that as our answer for this one so this will remain the same irrespective of which one of the two options of production we have chosen right now assume that you will sell this product h1111 in channel 1 in every region for $420 per unit so that's your sales price use the unit costs of $139.50 and duties and tariffs from your links manual to calculate per unit gross margin by production option now if you look at the links manual it will tell you that you have an 8% so I'll just put that here 8% of sales price so region 1 region 2 you incur this much of duty if it is not being built there 8% of sales price for region 3 you incur 12% of sales price so these are the values that you will have to consider as your duties for products that are not being built so I'll just write it here sorry duties okay so we will add these costs as and when we are not engaging in postponed production so now we look at the product cost which is $139.50 for the plant so we write that here in the previous slide we had calculated the postponed production for region 1 which was 204 dollars and 50 cents again if we are building it with plant it's going to remain 139.50 for region 2 the post one production costs were 207 dollars and 50 cents for region 3 likewise 139 dollars and 50 cents and the post one production was 201 dollars and 50 cents so that has been accounted for based on our calculation in the previous slide the duties and tariffs we don't have any duties and tariffs in region 1 because it's been built in region 1 for region 2 it's 8% of sales price so 8% of $420 8% of $420 will give you 33.60 and here it is postponed production therefore 0 ok so this I'm just going to put it in bracket that's the way you have calculated the duties and tariffs for region 2 for region 3 it's 12 percent of 420 dollars so that would cost you 50 dollars and 40 cents so you would put that here for production and plant being shipped to region 3 but if it is postponed production it will be zero so you can calculate the gross margins as 280 dollars and 50 cents for region 1 using plant 215 dollars and 50 cents with postponed production 246 dollars and 90 cents if you were to use uh, if you were to produce it in plant and ship it to region 2 212 dollars and 50 cents for postponed production for region 2 and 230 point one zero finally here you will have two hundred eighteen dollars and fifty cents all we are doing is taking the price and subtracting the cost components okay so the gross margin as a percentage of revenues based on these three different regions strategies would be sixty seven percent if we were to produce in plant for region one fifty one percent if you were to postpone produce for region 1 so clearly between the two you would want to produce in plant for region 1 for region 2 59% is when you make it in the plant which is in region 1 and ship it out to region 2 and if you were to use postponed production it would be 51% and finally for region 3 55% if you were to make it in plant and then ship it to region 3 and 52 percent if you were to send the product in semi-finished format and and engage in postponed production 
So for all three regions, based on our calculations, we notice that it's better to produce in the plant and then ship it to those regions because our gross margin as a percentage of revenue is higher. Now, this may not be the case for every product and every scenario. In our situation, we know that we were using a product with the lowest possible configuration, which means that we were really overbuilding the product a lot, nine kilograms of alpha and nine kilograms of beta. But if your product had a much higher configuration than this, then these percentage values would change. And that would tell you whether you should be using postponed production or you should be producing the product in plant and then shipping it out to regions one, two, and three. So this is something which you should be doing as a part of your calculations to finalize whether you should engage in postponed production or not. That's where I end my discussion on production issues. Thanks for listening.